we tried to respond to who the kids are these days and what's affecting them. There's thousands of images that you're flashed with like every day. You don't really have a choice about the media in your life. It is there, it's present. You're going to be hit with it no matter what. What did you find about how they edited? Yeah, Greg. It just gave the basics of the incident. The students have been in the midst of a news reporting research project where they had to begin to make direct comparison of what the sources said. It's prejudicial, it's racist, and it's like not okay. Did you get any from the police officer's point of view? They needed to think about who's telling the story and why are they telling it this way and what are they trying to get out of me? What I want to do is have you think a little bit about the stories that we tell in our media about violence. We have to make a pamphlet that explains like media violence and what it is. As they are asked to come up with five pieces of advice, it will force them to really critically evaluate their research. Is this a credible source or not? Is this something I can trust and rely on? We have to get research off the internet or like quotes from like doctors or people who like have done research from on subjects that pertain to that. Is violence verbal or physical? Or both? Both. Just both. Because we see it every day. Why are we worrying about it now in our American now we have culture? studies that, that prove that kids are relating TV to violence and if they see something violent on TV or video game they go out and do it. This is the story you're given. Now, you have to make a movie of it. What do you put in? What do you leave out? My students have just finished reading One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Ken Kesey. We are now moving from that novel to looking at the film and comparing what the two different media can do with a story. How did this director tell the story using images? The guiding question I have in my course is who is telling the story and what impact the storyteller has of a story being told. How do they give the chief a voice? Everything we read about is through his eyes, so you're getting his perspective and no one else's, really. Who is telling the story is crucial. I watched in utter amazement and total horror at what I saw. I didn't know how to react. I didn't know what to do or what to say. My parents were talking to me and telling me, could this happen to you? And then it like, hit me that this could happen to me. And then like, all of a sudden, there's like shootings all over the country. And now it's almost like routine. Students are discussing papers that they wrote where they explore an experience they've had with a certain representation of media violence. What about that representation makes it, makes it disturbing? It's a horrible tragedy. All and we made, we made entertainment out of it, made, and somebody made a few million dollars off of that movie. Kind of wonder, like, why would somebody be videotaping that in the first place? Why do you think people watch them? What sort of effect does that have? For us not to talk with students before they graduate from high school about how those messages are created and what the purposes of those messages are, it's educationally irresponsible. If you're knowledgeable about the media, then you have the power to choose if you want it to affect you or not. You've got to educate us. They can't just, you know, point fingers. It just makes people think. So in the end, Beth.